Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to this third part of this tutorial for Apple Motion in which we're creating this steampunk door scene. So lots of interesting stuff to get through in this part, so let's get started. So the first thing I think we can look at is the text, and I'm going to bring in some pre-prepared text. I'm going to make a new group, and I'm just going to paste in the text that I've already made. Uh, I've used this fancy font called Delta. I've used the condensed version for the top line and the standard version, the extended version for the bottom line. I've, I've moved some of the letters around and so on. You, you'll obviously be using your own text, so I'm not going to waste your time showing you how I did this. You can use any text. You can even use a artwork of a logo if that's what you prefer. So anyway, let's get going on this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a clone of this. And I'm going to move it down behind my main text. And so this clone, I'm going to add Stylize Extrude. So again, we want an angle of 270. That's coming down from the top. We're going to have a distance of 30. And I'm just going to reduce the back size so we get a little bit of sort of perspective distortion on it. So 0.97, you can see that's disappearing away to a vanishing point. And then I'm also going to add a color levels. And I'm just going to bring down the, the level of that so we've got something a little bit more dramatic like so. So next I want to bring in an asset and it's going to be called Metal. And it wants to sit above our original text like so. Just whatever your text is, you just make, need to make sure that this is going to be big enough to, to cover it. And what I'm going to do is an, add an image mask to that. And I'm going to use the original text as the source. And I need to turn the original source back on again. I'm going to set the blend mode of this metal layer to multiply. It won't have any effect just yet, but when we change the color of the text, it will. Then I'm going to take the image mask and I'm going to come to filters, stylize, min max. Actually, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing here. So I just want to shrink down the mask here using this filter. So the mode is minimum and I'm going to set the radius to five. And you can see that's exposed a line all the way around. And then what I want to do is come to the mask and it's offset here. I'm going to set that Y value to seven. And now you can see the difference that makes that's created this sort of uh, little bevel effect there. Then I'm going to grab that clone that we made and I'm going to duplicate it. So right click duplicate. So the duplicate is on top there. Let's come over to the filters and I want to change this extrude here. First of all, I'm going to set the back size to one and the angle, I want it going the opposite way. So that's the opposite of 270 is 90 and the distance is just five. And I think hopefully you can see that's now just given us a, an upper bevel to, to match the lower one. And finally, I want to add some staining to these letters and I'm going to import another asset. It's called drips. Bring that in. I'm going to set its blend mode to multiply and bring the level down to about uh, 65, I think. Then what we need to do is we need to mask this. So right click, add image mask. We'll use the uh, main text as our source. So drag that in, remembering to turn it back on again afterwards. And then we can just move these drips till they are basically staining those top letters like that. And then I'm just going to duplicate that and then just move them down so they're staining the bottom letters. And with these, I'm just going to shrink the scale down a bit. And now, finally, we can just adjust the color to taste. So if we come back into the text, 
Actually, let's do it a different way. Just supposing you've you've got, got a logo, you'll probably do this this way. So let's add instead a colorize. So we can actually use the colorize just to give ourselves a little bit of color. So an actual fact, I'm going to go for cyan and not very saturated. Something like that, I think. And what I might also do is increase the saturation on that metal layer. So add a hue saturation to that and just bring up the saturation till we've got something like that. Okay, and there's just one final thing I want to do here, and that's to take the group and come to filters, sharpen, and add an unsharp mask. And it doesn't look very good at the moment. So to improve the look of this, we're going to come over to the unsharp mask. We're going to have a radius of 12, and then we're also going to mix it back to around 50%. And as you can see, that's kind of sharpened it up, but it's also given us some interesting little staining on the, the edge of the uh, extrusion like that. And I think that's quite nice. So you can play with the, the amount of that to taste. I think probably, you know, 50, 60% is probably all you're going to want. So that's our text basically done. And I've renamed that group text base. Now I'm actually going to turn it off and close it down because we don't need to see it because what we're actually going to do is create a clone of it. So make clone layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off the two halves. So I'm going to come to the Bezier mask tool down here, just off the bottom of the screen from that menu there. And then I'm going to draw through the middle of this like so till I've isolated the left-hand side. And then I'm going to duplicate that clone, right-click duplicate, come to the mask, and we'll invert it. So now we've got two sides to our text. And then what we'll need to do is we'll need to link them to their respective doors. So I've just renamed those two clones so we know exactly what they are. So that's the left-hand side, and we're going to come to properties, We'll add parameter behavior to that X position value, and we'll use the left door as the source. And because the initial position of that door is at negative 285, we need to adjust this X offset here. So set that to positive 285, and we'll be back to where we were. And so we'll do the same thing with the right-hand door, right-hand text, I should say, X position, add parameter behavior, link, and we'll link it to the left-hand door. Now, in this case, we want the scale to be negative one. So we want to move it in the opposite direction, and the X offset we'll set to positive 285. And now, when the doors open, the two halves of the text move with their respective door element. So what I'm going to do with this text is actually want to move it out uh, so I've selected both those layers. I'm going to move it out on Z by quite a lot. So let's go for 200, I think. Because what I want is some parallax between the two, between the door and the, I don't know whether you can see, but there's a little bit of sort of differential movement between the text and the, the door that it's sort of sitting over. And that gives us a little bit more sense of depth. And another thing I'd like to do to enhance that sense of depth is to give those two layers a drop shadow. So I'm going to select both of those. That's command click to select both of them. Turn on the drop shadow. Again, you'll remember that our angle is 270, that light coming down from the top. Set the opacity all the way up and then let's play with the distance. Uh, we can probably go quite far. So let's go for, I don't know, there you go, about 40. And then just blur it a little bit. So blur it about 20, I think. And again, hopefully you can see that just helps to sit it in front of the door much more effectively. So I've relabeled that group as text in capitals because it's our master to differentiate it from our text base. So we can close that on down. So now we can look at adding some lighting. Let's zoom back out again and come to the beginning. And I want to show you a mistake that I made. So I'm going to add this light and then I'll explain what it is. So switch to 3D. Uh, let's turn off that color solid. So we don't need to see it. 
and this light let's move it out let's say to 500 so it illuminates our text so the mistake that I made is that now there is no drop shadow for the uh, hanger assembly these hangers here and that's because as soon as this group has been made 3D it loses the ability to cast a, sh um, a drop shadow so what we need to do is we need to make a new group above it we need to turn this group back to 2D and we need to put it into the 3D group and now I think you can see we have actually got that drop shadow back because it applies to the 2D group inside. You can see that, that drop shadow here on those elements. So I've relabeled that group as hangers 3D and you've got the 2D group inside it and we can close it down. So then let's come back to our lighting. So we're going to have a lot of lights in this scene and our main light here, I want to increase its fall off to five because we don't want these, uh, we want the lights to be sort of fairly specific to the specific areas that we're going to place them in, not spread out too much. And increasing the fall off just reduces their, their spread. And I think I might just move it up a little bit on Y. Let's go for 100. Okay, and so now I'm going to duplicate that light. So right click, duplicate. And I want this light to be affecting the cogs on the left. So I'm going to set up its position as follows, negative 1200 on X, zero on Y, and 150 on Z. So it's quite specifically lighting up just those cogs there. Then I can duplicate it, right click duplicate, and all we need to do here is move it over to the opposite side, so positive 1200. So now it's lighting up that side. So I've relabeled those two left and right cogs. And so I'm going to duplicate the left cogs and I want a light behind these cogs. So I'm going to move that up to the top. And the position of this one is going to be negative 1000 on X and negative 500 on Z. Then we can really crank up its intensity. I'm going to go for 750. And you can see we've got that nice effect of a light behind everything else. And I'm going to duplicate that, needless to say, and move it over to the other side, so positive 1000 on X. And I've relabeled both of those uh, left back and right back. So I've renamed our original light, our, our main central light there, as main light. And I want to set up a bit of animation on it because I want it to start coming on at around four seconds. So let's come to four seconds on the timeline and let's keyframe its intensity. And I'm going to set that to 10 because initially I wanted it to be nice and moody like this. Then I'm going to step forward three frames. So 403. And I'm going to set that intensity up to 200. I'm going to step forward another three frames. So 406. Set that back down again to 100. And then I'm going to step forward six frames so 412, and I'm going to set that intensity to, I think, 300. And then we'll get this effect of moody beginning and then a little flicker as it comes on. And I'd also like to keyframe the intensity of the left and right cog lights. So I can select both of those and keyframe them at the same time. So I'm going to come to nine seconds. So come on, clicking or shift clicking. And we'll select them both instantly. So at nine seconds, I'm going to set their intensity to 200. And then I'm going to come to the first frame and set that intensity back down to 50. So gradually brightening up like that from this nice moody start. So a few more things to add, one of the which is uh, I want a background here rather than just black behind the doors. So I'm going to import the thing called Rich Sky, bring that into this group here. Uh, we need to move it a long way back, so I'm going to move it back by negative 7000 on Z. We also don't want it to be affected by the lighting, so we want it to turn that lighting off like so, and then just we scale it way up 
we might have to adjust that when we when we look at adding our camera, which is probably the next thing we want to do, I think. So let's just add object camera. Let's add a basic motion throw. Now, because I've conceived of this scene as us looking up, hence the, the way these extrusions work, what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of a, an X rotation to the camera. So let's go for five degrees on the camera. So it's looking up and it's going to match our extrusions better. And then let's set up that throw behavior. So let's switch to ramp to final value, open up the throw distance, and let's have a Z value of negative 500 and a Y value of 50. Just pushing in like that gently on the, the doorway. You'll see that our sky is not quite fitting and we probably just need to move it up a little bit like that. That's probably quite good. So there are just a few more structural elements I'd like to add to the scene. I'm just going to turn off the camera temporarily and I'm also going to turn off the lighting while we do this. And I'm going to make a new group. Into this group, I'm going to import two assets, one of which is called thin pipe and the other is, which is called bent pipe. So thin pipe and bent pipe, bring both those in. So let's turn off the thin pipe. My bent pipe here, I'm just going to rotate it through 90 degrees on Z. And then I want to move it a long way towards the camera. So I think I'm going to go for 1400 and just move it over to the left there. And I might just scale it down a little bit just so we see a little bit of that bend there. Let's see where the camera on. I should need to move it down, don't I, like so? And move it out a bit. So I should, I should be having the camera on for this construction, I think. And then I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to move it over to the other side. So let's go for 280 and let's go for 270 on that Z rotation. So it's the other way around, something like that. Just uh, doesn't want to be too sort of symmetrical with this stuff. So then we turn when if we turn the lighting back on again, we won't be able to see those because we'll need to add uh, some specific pipe lighting. Uh, but I've not yet done with the with the overall effect. We want to use this other element, which is the thin pipe. It looks like that. And this I'm going to make a replicator out of. So object replicate. I just want one row. And let's just increase the width. That's six, one, two, four. I'm just trying to sort of tile it up so it looks like a continuous thing. Okay, and then we can move this replicator again. Let's move it, say, to 1200. Let's scale it down quite a bit. Let's move it up to around there. Let's duplicate that. Right click duplicate. Let's move it down on Y. Maybe go for 1300. On Z. So have we got our camera on? We have got our camera on. You'll see that this gives us some nice sort of parallax with the with the main scene, which is otherwise a little bit flat, but but we've got these pipes that are going to add some drama. I think what I'm also going to do is again duplicate that replicator and have it run vertically. So let's set the Z rotation to 90 and let's move it over somewhere like that. And let's maybe have that at 1350 in a bit more like that. And let's have another one on the other side. So duplicate, move it over to the other side, perhaps tuck it in a little bit more behind that, perhaps have it a little bit further back. Let's go for 1100 on this one. A little bit of randomness, I think, is going to make this work better. So that's our pipes. And because of that, th those differential depths, we've got a kind of interesting uh, tunnel effect there. So I've called that group pipes and we can close it down. And let's add a little bit more lighting to take care of the pipes. So let's turn the lighting back on again, render lighting. I'm going to add a new light. So object light, I want its intensity way down. So let's go for 10. And again, let's have a fall off, maybe a five. 
And then its position, let's go for negative 1,000 on x. And let's move it out on y. So we probably need to go for something like 1,600 in order to cover the pipes like that. And I think what I might actually do is increase its fall off uh, if we went for 10. So it just gives us a faint sense of those, those pipes without them actually being too lit because obviously there's, the texturing is not fantastic on them, but uh, the, the sort of dark looming shape is, is, is working really well. So that really is pretty much the overall scene. I'm just going to whiz through some very small tweaks. So I'm just going to move that main light a little bit close to the text. I'm going to select the text. I'm going to add color levels and just darken it down just a little bit. Again, I'm going for drama all the time here. And might take that main light and maybe just give it a little bit of a yellow cast and then select the two cog lights and go in the opposite direction, just so we've got more color contrast. Come down to that door panel, add a color levels. Again, just doing this really quick. Just, just want to give it a little bit more crunch, like so. Again, just kind of drama, make everything stand out a little bit more. So you get the idea. There's, there's lots you can do, just kind of tweak, tweak the look to your taste. I think I'm definitely going to take those backlights and crank them up a lot. Let's even go for 1500, just so we've got a lot more drama out of those, especially at the beginning there. That's, that's kind of nice when they're really intense. So in my version, I added some nice light rays at the opening here, a little bit of glow on the text, as you can see, and then these plumes of smoke as the door begins to open. And then behind the door, we can see this steampunk airship and a small flight of birds crosses over as well. So lots of extra details that you can add or not as the case may be, but I, think, I hope you've got the, the overall idea of the project. So thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you again another time.